Inflation. It's a word that's been on everyone's minds, dominating headlines and dinner table conversations alike. For months, Americans have grappled with the rising cost of everything from groceries to gas, putting a strain on household budgets and fueling economic anxiety. The Federal Reserve, our nation's central bank, has taken center stage in the battle against inflation, wielding its monetary policy tools in an effort to rein in soaring prices. At the heart of this complex economic drama is Beth Hammock, President and CEO of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City. Hammock, a seasoned economist and a key voice within the Fed, has provided valuable insights into the central bank's thinking as it navigates this challenging economic landscape. Her words and actions offer a glimpse into the high stakes decisions being made behind closed doors. Decisions that impact the financial well-being of every American. But what exactly is the current state of inflation in the US? How has it impacted the lives of ordinary Americans? And what role does Beth Hammock play in shaping the Fed's response to this pressing economic challenge? The Fed, under the leadership of Chair Jerome Powell, has embarked on an aggressive campaign to combat inflation, deploying a series of interest rate hikes in an attempt to cool the economy and slow the pace of price increases. These rate hikes, the most rapid in decades, are designed to make borrowing more expensive, which in theory should curb spending and eventually bring inflation under control. While the Fed's actions have yet to fully tame inflation, there have been some glimmers of hope in recent economic data. Inflation, as measured by the Consumer Price Index, has shown signs of easing, suggesting that the Fed's efforts may be starting to gain traction. But is it too early to declare victory? What measures have been effective so far? The Fed's primary weapon in the fight against inflation is its ability to influence interest rates. By raising interest rates, the Fed effectively increases the cost of borrowing money for individuals and businesses. This can have a ripple effect throughout the economy, as higher borrowing costs discourage spending and investment, ultimately easing demand and, in theory, slowing inflation. One of the key interest rates that the Fed targets is the federal funds rate, which is the interest rate that banks charge each other for overnight loans. When the Fed raises the federal funds rate, it tends to push up other interest rates as well, including those on mortgages, auto loans and credit cards. The Fed has also been winding down its holdings of Treasury securities, a process known as quantitative tightening, which can also put upward pressure on interest rates. By reducing the amount of money it pumps into the financial system, the Fed aims to further cool economic activity. These measures have shown some success, as evidenced by the recent moderation in inflation. However, it's important to note that monetary policy operates with a lag, meaning that it takes time for the full effects of the Fed's actions to be felt in the economy. Despite the recent easing in inflation, the road ahead remains uncertain. Inflation is still well above the Fed's 2% target, and bringing it down to that level without triggering a recession is proving to be a delicate balancing act. The Fed must carefully calibrate its policy moves, avoiding both the perils of runaway inflation and the pain of a sharp economic downturn. Adding to the complexity of the situation are the persistent supply chain disruptions and geopolitical tensions that continue to exert upward pressure on prices. The war in Ukraine, for instance, has sent shockwaves through global energy markets, contributing to higher prices for oil and gas. Why is inflation still above the target? Section 5, Inflation's Stubborn Components While inflation has shown signs of easing overall, certain components of inflation remain stubbornly high. One area of concern is core inflation, which excludes volatile food and energy prices. Core inflation is often seen as a better indicator of underlying inflationary pressures, and it has remained elevated, 
suggesting that inflation is more deeply entrenched in the economy. Housing costs, in particular, have been a major driver of inflation. Rents and home prices have soared in recent years, fueled by a combination of factors, including low interest rates, a shortage of housing supply, and strong demand from home buyers. The Fed's rate hikes have started to cool the housing market, but it remains to be seen how quickly and to what extent housing costs will moderate. Another concern is wage growth, which, while not the primary driver of inflation, can contribute to a wage price spiral if businesses continue to raise prices to cover higher labor costs. The tight labor market, with its low unemployment rate and strong demand for workers, has put upward pressure on wages. Section 6. Charting the course. The Fed finds itself at a critical juncture in its fight against inflation. While some progress has been made, the battle is far from over. The central bank must now weigh the risks of doing too much, potentially tipping the economy into a recession against the risks of doing too little, allowing inflation to become more deeply entrenched. The Fed's policy decisions in the coming months will be guided by incoming economic data, including inflation readings, employment reports, and measures of consumer and business confidence. The central bank will also be closely monitoring financial markets for signs of stress or instability. What will the Fed do to achieve the 2% target? Section 7. Navigating Uncertainty Given the uncertain economic outlook, predicting the Fed's next moves with certainty is impossible. However, most economists expect the Fed to continue raising interest rates in the near term, albeit at a more gradual pace than in recent months. The central bank may opt for smaller rate hikes as it assesses the impact of its previous moves and gauges the resilience of the economy. The Fed has signaled its commitment to bringing inflation down to its 2% target, and it has reiterated its willingness to do whatever it takes to achieve that goal. This suggests that further interest rate hikes are likely in the pipeline, even if they come at the risk of slowing economic growth. Ultimately, the Fed's policy path will be data-dependent, with decisions made on a meeting-by-meeting -meeting basis. The central bank will continue to monitor economic developments closely and adjust its course as needed to fulfill its dual mandate of promoting maximum employment and price stability. Section 8 a collective challenge. The fight against inflation is not just the Fed's responsibility. It's a collective challenge that requires a coordinated response from policymakers, businesses and consumers alike. Fiscal policy, for example, can play a role in easing inflationary pressures through measures such as reducing government spending or raising taxes. Businesses can contribute by finding ways to improve efficiency and productivity while consumers can adjust their spending habits and make more informed purchasing decisions. The current inflationary episode has tested the resilience of the US economy and the resolve of its central bank. The Fed, under immense pressure, has taken bold steps to rein in inflation. And while the path ahead remains uncertain, the central bank has the tools and the determination to restore price stability. Section 9 your turn, weighing in. What do you think? Is the Fed doing enough to combat inflation? Are its policies having the desired effect? What more can be done to ease the burden of rising prices on American families and businesses? Share your thoughts and insights in the comments below.